Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Holy cow, SpaceX is doing it. They took Booster 7 from the production site down to the launch site, which is really cool because now they're going to be testing Booster 7 for an orbital flight test of Booster 7 and Ship 24, which makes me excitedly happy. I'm super happy about this because I thought they were going to move on to Booster 8 because Booster 7 had that kind of explosion thing going on that wasn't really expected, but SpaceX took it back to the production site, built it back up, fixed it up, and now they're back into production mode of the launch testing for the orbital flight test. Super cool. What are they going to do next? They're going to be testing the outer ring of the booster, of Booster 7. That's what Elon Musk said in a tweet. Now they're going to be testing that, but they have to do some tests first. They may be doing an ambient pressure test first. They have to make sure that everything inside of the booster works, but they also have to make sure that everything that's flowing into the booster works. So all the, the pipes, all the valves, everything that's going into the booster needs to work as well. I call them the tubes, if you will. The tubes going into the booster have to work properly in order for these tests to work. So possible cryogenic test just to make sure everything's fine for the upcoming orbital flight test but they have to do uh, some other testing in order to get to a static fire and we haven't had any notifications for any overpressure notices in the last few days so no static fire quite yet but they are preparing for it now here's what i want to show you about What's going on here? Marine Safety Information Bulletin. So this is what happens. They send this out to, uh, the Coast Guard sends this out to people. And they say, hey, if you're anywhere near SpaceX, just stay away. They say, okay, so here's the here's the zone, the keep out zone right here. Boca Chica, see where this little circle is right there? Right there? That's kind of where SpaceX is. It's right around that area. So they say, keep out of here. Stay out of this square. Don't get your boat in there because this is dangerous. If something were to happen to Booster 7, and nobody wants that to happen, something catastrophic were to happen, say if it has a, a rud on the pad, shrapnel could fly pretty far. You know, pieces of um, ships have been seen on the island, on South Padre Island, which is about seven miles away, six or seven miles away. They've seen pieces of steel on this island. And they want to make sure that everyone's safe. So that's why they do these bulletins. But this doesn't mean that there's going to be a static fire anytime soon. So basically, uh, the U.S. Co uh, SpaceX has informed the U.S. Coast Guard of scheduling scheduled testing at the facility located south of Brownsville, Texas, near Boca Chica Beach. During the hours of 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., August 8th through 11th. And that corresponds with the road closures. The road closures are to the 10th. So this says to the 11th. So through August 11th, 2022, each day a hazard area will exist in vicinity of the SpaceX facility. So basically, don't float your boat out there. Don't take your rig out there. Don't go fishing. Don't go paddleboarding. Don't go waveboarding. Don't go surfboarding. What? <laughs> Let's do some more testing and no more floating out in the water. That's what SpaceX is saying. But we do have some road closures as well. And the beach is closed right now as I'm going through this stuff. So they are going to be doing some testing today. We're not exactly sure. We're guessing some possible ambient pressure tests and possible, like I said before, the tubes going into the, uh, the booster need to be tested as well before they do the static fire. So right now, the road is closed. The beach is closed. There are some people under the pad still, under the launch pad, under the launch mount. There are people working underneath there. There are people uh, that were on lifts earlier, working on the side of the launch mount, working on the booster. And now from there, those people have left. And there are only a few people left underneath the launch mount as I speak. And this is 2.14 p.m. Eastern Time, 8-8-2022. So I want to know what you think as well. I want to know what you think about this testing schedule. Do you think they're going to be able to make it by the end of August, August 29th? Do you think they'll beat the SLS? A lot of people are speculating, uh, maybe, uh, but there are a few people, including myself, that are saying, hey, we need a lot of time 
to kind of get through this stuff. Not we, meaning me, but we, meaning SpaceX. They need a lot of time to get through all of these tests in order to move forward with the next phase, which is an orbital flight test. So I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments. I want to talk to you about this. I think it might be late September, early October. Uh, ship 24 still needs some more testing to be done. Uh, Booster still needs to test all the Raptors. And if anything goes wrong with those Raptors, they have to rebuild everything. They may even have to bring out Booster 8. Then they're going to have to go through the whole test cycle again. But that's the reason why this is an R&D facility, because if they are doing testing, things may happen to the booster. Things may happen to the ship. Things may actually happen to the tubes, if you will. The tubes or possibly the launch mount. So we'll see what happens in the next few days as far as testing goes. But it's an exciting time for SpaceX and all of spaceflight because once Starship is able to fly repeatedly, reliably, things are going to get very interesting in the spaceflight realm because they'll be able to fly some really cool stuff. Things the size of a bus or two up there and people as well. A little interesting note too. Um, if you were to like this video and subscribe to the video, YouTube will push more Starship content to you. So they'll say, hey, you like Starship stuff. You like SpaceX stuff. So I'm going to push you to these other creators, not just me. Like it's not a selfish thing. I like new subscribers. That's cool. But I want you to have the best experience you can on YouTube. So if you like and subscribe to this show, you may get different shows, better shows even than mine. And that's good for you. So if you could just leave me a like, leave me a subscribe, take us a second. And if you really like it, make sure to become a member of the channel and support the show because it takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of time to do these things. And I know a lot of other creators out there as well that are doing the same thing and it takes them forever to do this stuff. It takes a lot of time. So thanks everybody for all of your support. Thanks for everybody who's been watching and let me know again. I don't know. What do you think's next? I don't know. I'm so, I'm so confused. <laughs> I want it. I wanted to launch so fast. I wanted, I wanted this thing to launch last year. I moved to Texas so I could watch it launch last year, but it didn't. So I actually had to leave Texas. So I couldn't stay there. I had to leave. I had to, I had to leave Boca Chica area, but we do have some people on the ground there now, which is really cool. Really exciting. We have, uh, Holly Stargazer girl down there and she's helping us out with photos and some video coming up uh, of the launch site. So I'm excited about that working with her and building up the team. So thank you. I appreciate all of your time, all of your effort. I'll see you next time on the space news pod. That's the new theme song. Bye-bye everybody. The theme song of the space news pod.